Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome in the name of Jesus. I welcome those that are here, and I welcome those wherever you are that you're watching. May you be blessed with what you're about to hear in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that confirms the word in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Okay, so let's turn to 1 Corinthians 15. And I'm going to start with verse 57. 1 Corinthians 15, starting with verse 57, and then 58. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to declare this morning, I have victory. God has given me victory. Again, God has given me victory. No, you have victory. God has given you victory. This is more than just a phrase. This is a spiritual reality. The devil knows it. And unfortunately and sadly, a lot of people don't know it. The devil actually knows a lot more about it than you do. He wants you to think of it as just a nice phrase to quote. But it is a phrase that you can stand upon no matter what you're facing. You always have the victory. You are on the winning side. Amen. You are not on the losing side. You are on the winning side. Amen. Today, they're going to be playing in our country these football games to enter into what is called the Super Bowl where two teams will face off that have been victorious through the season. Amen? Amen? But today, one of them of the four, or two of the four, are going to be operating in victory. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be like those teams, because we're going to have to wait to find out who became victorious today. Everyone has a forecast, but we will find out at the end of the night... Who is going to enter the Super Bowl? Who was victorious to win their, uh, their, their thing and to go into the Super Bowl, right? And then we have to wait for the Super Bowl to figure out who is the victor. However, when it comes to the kingdom of heaven, you already have the victory. Christ has already won. Say that. Christ has already won. He took the keys from that devil. Say it. He took the keys from that devil. The devil doesn't have any power. The devil doesn't have any power. For all power has been given to Jesus. And he holds the keys. And he gives the keys to us. So we walk in victory. We walk in victory. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap. Thank you. Now, with that in mind. The Bible says in 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, we are to be steadfast. Why? Why? Did you ever think why the Bible says be steadfast? Because your enemy is going to be opposing you. Your enemy is going to be opposing you. If you want to know who your enemy is, look at it who's opposing you. Whether it's outwardly or secretly behind the scenes, you get words that they're speaking against you in the hallway. I've heard that about me already. You don't know, but they're having all kinds of conversations about you. Therefore, they are opposing me. 
and they, as an oppositional force, are operating under the sway of the enemy, though many probably have thought that what they do, they do on for the Lord. Right? So, they will oppose you. And that's why the Bible tells you, because you have the victory, say it, I have the victory. I have the victory. That the devil is not going to put me in a place. The devil is not going to put me in a place. To tell me I don't. To tell me I don't. Do you understand that? Yes. Why you have to be steadfast is you have to be convinced and remind yourself, like David would encourage himself in the Lord, that no matter what's going on, and no matter what the situation tells you, and no matter what the devil tries to impress with you regarding what's happening, you are operating from a place of victory. I, one of the things that I like about Curry Blake, he's a, a person uh, that has the continuation of John G. Lake Ministries, he's, he's a really awesome guy, but he's talking, and John G. Lake used to talk about this, we operate from a place of victory, never defeat. We are, in the name of Jesus, enforcing victory. All right? We had a woman, I trust you're feeling better already. We had a woman at the onset of this service announce to us that there was warfare in the parking lot outside. Now, she wasn't talking about there were people out there with signs and protesting like we might be seeing, but she's saying that she was being attacked from the invisible realm, and she knew by the attack it was the enemy, because he was trying to exacerbate or inflame the symptoms of the suffering that she decided to press through and come to church anyhow with. You got that? So when she comes to the parking lot, the devil tries to inflame the pain. Alright? And then use it to come to the head of the church and announce what he's doing out there. But praise God, brothers and sisters, I know I operate from a place of victory. And the devil is not going to convince me to feel sympathy for this beloved. I am going to enforce the victory of my Lord over her, and I commanded the devil and what he was doing to depart from her, and I did what the Bible said, anointed her head with oil, and I released the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith says, I know I've got the victory. That's my faith. I don't have to go and get the victory. I just got to remove what tells me I don't have the victory. Because the word of God cannot be changed. It is forever settled. You can doubt it. Go ahead. Eve didn't have got her trouble. You can go ahead and, 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 and doubt it too, and it'll get you in trouble too. The Bible says, take every thought captive. Cast down vain imaginations and everything that would set itself against the knowledge of God. Come on, beloved. Are you hearing me this morning? Are you hearing me from wherever you're watching? Praise God. We operate from a place of victory. Yes, we can come under opposition. Yes, we can come under assault. Yes, we can come under attack. So what? The Bible says the sufferings of this present time are worthy to be compared to that glory that's going to be revealed in me. Even the Apostle Paul in, uh, in, in Corinthians said he had a thorn in the flesh and he cried out to the Lord three times and the Lord straightened him out. And it was, hey, you have the victory. My victory, my power is perfected in your weakness. Now God doesn't walk what you walk around with pain, weakness, and suffering for the name of pain, weakness, and suffering and then somehow give glory to God. I'm telling you, beloved, if you've got pain, weakness, and suffering, the enemy is opposing you, but you ought to begin to look at the power that's at work within you. Because I hear too many people giving God glory in a perverse way because they're suffering. And I'm saying, no, no, no. 
that's half scripture. You might be under attack, but you're under anointing. You have the glory of God on you. And when the Apostle Paul got the revelation of that, he then realized, bring it on, because I've got the power on my life that the glory of God will rest upon me. So if you tell me about your pain and suffering, I want to hear about the glory on you. But that, my beloved, is you won't hear that very much. People will say the glory comes later. No, Jesus told him the glory is already on him. See, even, even Peter was told, beloved, don't think it's strange about these fiery trials that are coming upon you. As though some strange thing is happening to you. But what is the reason for the fiery trial? The glory God rest upon you. How many people here want to become troublemakers? I do. I want to give the devil trouble. I want the devil go, oh no, not him. Do you know when the apostle Paul came into Macedonia? The devil had ruled over that place. And he said, oh no, not that troublemaker. And the devil, using a woman with a spirit of divination, began to stir things up to get attention on her. Get attention on the devil declaring things, even if it's so-called declaring who they were. These men are the servants of the Most High God. They can tell you, since when does God use the devil to declare? He uses man that's born again to bring forth the word of salvation. Never a devil. Amen. Even an angel wouldn't do such a thing. Even an angel was sent from the, uh, went to the house of Cornelius and said, you go call Peter. He'll tell you how to get saved. It's for us. And here we got the devil exploiting a woman under the uh, possession of a spirit of divination. You'll find that in Acts 16. Anyhow, these kingdoms were colliding and Paul cast it out in the name of Jesus. Oh, who's got the power? How? Who's got the power? How? Who's got the victory? We do. We do. We do. Never walk around like you don't have the victory. I don't, I, I don't care if, if, you, if, if you're feeling the oppression. I care, but I don't care. I don't care if you're feeling the suffering part. What I care about is why. Now see, if you just sin, you're in trouble. Alright? If you sin, I care about that. If you're suffering, it's because you open the door up to the devil... Because what you've been doing, I'm okay. But if you're suffering because the glory is increasing on you, that you're coming into a place of revelation. Remember going back to the Apostle Paul and that thorn in the flesh? He had an abundance of revelation. That brother was hooked up, tuned in. Matter of fact, the Bible says he was up in paradise seeing things, hearing things he can't even tell you about. <laughs> Isn't that glorious? Yes. Now, how can he be up there and not have the victory? I want you to say, he had the victory. He, he had his victory. victory. And I have the victory. I have, I have the victory. victory. No matter what you go through, no never let that situation or the devil convince you that you're in defeat and that somehow yes. you've got to pray for the victory. I don't want to hear you praying for the victory because that Bible just told you, I've got the victory. If I am in Christ, how can Christ not have the victory? I might be under the attack. I might come under the oppression. I might come under confusion. But I'm still in a place of victory. Praise be unto God. Yes, Lord. And therefore, I will oppose the enemy from a position of victory. I am in Christ. I am a new creation. Yes. All things are passed away and all things have become new because I never existed before like this. Amen. If I'm a new creation, then I didn't exist before like this. Nothing existed like this. 
And the devil's hated us ever since. So he wants to convince you that what you're going through is a sign you don't have a bigger. Trust me, I have been there a thousand times over. And really at times thinking, I'm in defeat. No, 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 no. Not anymore. I'm not going to deny that I might be going through some stuff. But I'm already operating from victory, Pastor Amy. You have victory. Everything that you've been leaning for, you will have even more than that, God says. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the same thing with you, beloved. God is putting the spirit of prophecy upon you, and you're going to start prophesying like never before. And brother, you shall hear the things of heaven. The enemy that's been trying to steal your ears, God is blessing your ears, and you're going to begin to hear and discern for yourself. Yes, God has chosen you. And that stuff, that strife that you continue to go through, because of the victory that's on you. You stir up trouble all around you. But now know that's why it happens. Amen? That's why the Bible tells you to be steadfast. Now see, the, the undiscerning mind, the natural mind says, oh, I need to be steadfast. That means I've I got to keep coming to church. I've got to keep reading my Bible. i got to keep praying. I've got to keep doing this. i got to tithe. I, just, I can't just quit. I can't, I can't skip church. That's how I'm being steadfast. No, 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 no. Those, those might be good things, but let me tell you something, beloved. If you rely on those things, you are getting set up. Because the moment you fail at them, you, are, you already are a place of defeat, right? We all been there. I used to feel good when I was a young man because I went to church for like 12 weeks in a row. And then one day I skipped church and I felt like I'm going to hell. <laughs> Why? Because my righteousness was not by faith in Christ and the victory that he brings. My righteousness was now in me. It was dependent on me. Now my understanding is my righteousness is filthy. Why would I put that garment on again? And who dares put that garment on me but other than the devil himself? Yeah, well, I'm casting that garment off and I'm wearing the robes of Jesus Christ. I'm going to have faith in Christ and faith in God and that's the righteousness of God by which I stand. Faith in Christ and Christ alone. If by grace you have been saved and not by works that any of you can boast. Don't think because you went to Sunday school for a year without skipping that counts for something. <laughs> but we've been taught that stuff. Now, don't, I'm not telling you to stay home. Go and learn. But victory is in Christ. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So, when it tells you to be steadfast, it tells you that when you are operating from a place of victory, the enemy will oppose you. We kind of see that happening globally right now. We alluded to that earlier. We'll get into that. Right? Yeah. There's a place of victory, but there's a lot of opposition against it. Mm -hmm. Right? So, just because you're in a place of victory doesn't mean you're going to be, not going to be opposed. Look, if Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you too. Why? Because you're in a place of victory. Listen, the moment the Holy Ghost came down from heaven in the Jordan, the oppositional forces worked very, very quickly. Jesus had to go out into the wilderness with the Holy Ghost, place of glorious victory, and the devil stood against him and opposed him for 40 days. Do you know that? The Apostle Paul, when he also got filled with the Holy Ghost and got converted from he who persecuted the church, who's now building the church, isn't that glorious, by the way? Ha! 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 Boy, the devil was mad that day. Boy, was he mad! Because there was none like Paul willing to kill Jesus' kids. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Paul stood out among the rest and he went, he, he, was, he was arresting Christians. He'll tell you, I was putting them to death. You know the devil like, that's my boy. You know, puppet, holding Paul like a puppet with his strings until Jesus came along and whack, yeah. cut them strings off. Didn't he? Yeah. Knocked that brother right down to the ground with light and revelation and he never was the same since. And now, he who opposed the church was being opposed by the devil. That's why we reference the thorn in the flesh. 
He said, it's a messenger of Satan. And, and, and listen, beloved, he did not say a messenger from God. Never think what you're going through is a direct message from God. I know people do that. Well, you must be having this disease because God's teaching you something. Get away from me with that doctrine. That's false doctrine. That's ignorance. I don't want to hear that. Don't even come and pray for me. If brother, if, if, brothers and sisters, if, if I'm ever in a place and I need prayer, uh, you, you be my shield bearer. Be something. If somebody walks into my room and begins to talk that stuff, please usher them out in the name of Jesus. If you're coming in with the sword of the Holy Ghost, yeah. yes. you're coming in wearing the armor of God, yeah. and you've got that shield of faith, I want you gathered around me. Even Paul was stoned to death, drug out of the city, and the church, carrying the sword, carrying the shield, carrying the spirit, lifted that brother up. Amen. The dead church would have taken him out and buried him. Right? Mm -hmm. I want you to say things are changing. Things are changing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes. Look, look at America. Amer it's changing. Yes. And there's a wrestling going on. Yeah. But I know who has the victory. Yes. Anybody who names Christ has the victory. Yeah. Anybody who puts their faith in Christ oh, 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 has the victory. Anybody who's willing to have a man or a woman of God pray in the name of Jesus Christ has just established victory for all. I want you to say, I got victory. I got victory. I am not defeated. I am not defeated. I enforce victory. I enforce victory. When defeat, when defeat tries to take out my feet. Tries to take out my feet. I still have victory. I still have victory. And I'm going to enforce that victory. And I'm going to enforce that And if I need the church to enforce the victory with me, I will do so. I will do so. Amen? Let me hear an amen. Amen. Did not the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians talk about a hardship that he was under, that he despaired even of life? 2 Corinthians, first chapter, read it for yourself. Ah, it doesn't sound good. Most Christians would say, I don't want that. But he had the sentence of death in himself and all that kind of stuff. But he, gave, he said he got victory. And how did he get victory? Through God and through the church praying for him. And then later, when he tells us about the armor of God, he tells the church, and pray for me! And pray for me! That's how we also get the victory. Because sometimes we really come under things. And you can't pray yourself through it. But the church, beloved, like with the Apostle Paul, though it looked like you were dead on the ground, suddenly you get raised up. Yes. And you know that day when that happened, the devil was going, are you serious? I was done with that troublemaker. Are you serious? What do I got to do? And you know all the devil's servants that thought they were serving God who stoned Paul and drug him out of the city and left his carcass out there like a piece of dead meat or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They heard about it. Man, what do I got to do? We knock this guy down and he gets right back up. That's because the church. Glory, glory. Beloved, I want and God wants people to operate with conviction that they are in Christ. Mm -hmm. When did you ever see Christ defeated? Yeah. Don't think that cross was his defeat. That was your victory. Amen. He said, I could call for a thousand angels. I could tear this place apart. But you're in my heart. And I come to take you away from defeat and from Satan and the bondage he put you under. And I come to lay my life down. My God, when did the devil ever lay his life down for anybody? How come in the wilderness he offered everything but himself? How come the devil didn't say, you know what? If you'll, I'll bow down and worship. No, he said, you bow down and worship me. Hey, you get it? The devil didn't offer anything. 
of himself. Because he can't. That's the way evil is. It's all about me. But my God, my God would hang on a cross because of the joy that was set before him. And you are his joy, Pastor Amy. Pat, you're his joy. Cookie, you're his joy. Annabelle, Stacy, you're his joy. Laurie, you're his joy. Linda, you're his joy. Rochelle, you're his joy. All of you, you're his joy. You, 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 you think God didn't know about you before you were born? No, he had a plan from the beginning, beloved. He had a plan from the beginning. Praise God. Nobody gets ahead of God. God is already ahead of you. Your steps are ordered. I want you to say it. My steps are ordered. My steps are ordered. And they're victorious steps. And they're victorious steps. And I need to be steadfast. And I need to be steadfast. Steadfast in the conviction that I'm operating from victory. Even if at times I'm so overwhelmed, I've got to call on somebody else. Amen. But beloved, be careful upon whom you call. Mm -hmm. I've had people on the other end of the phone tell me stuff that took me even lower. Mm -hmm. But I've also had those that are operating in the Holy Spirit that told me words that shot me out like a cannon, shot me up like a rocket. Even though I'm still going through what I was going through, I was now operating in the orbits. You know, I, I was, you know, got going around the earth. Not literally, just the idea of it. Amen? Now, not only are you to be steadfast, but you're to be, in verse 58, immovable. Immovable. Say, I'm to be immovable. Which tells you that one of the tactics of the enemy who knows you've got victory is to move you off the field of victory. Think of Goliath intimidating David to move him off the field of battle. But David had faith in God that he already had the victory. God reminded him he had the victory with the bear and the lion. And he said, I'm going to have the victory here because God's already given me victory. Yes. See? So no matter how big Goliath is, no matter how threatening he is, David did not cower with fear and run and go back up to the tent of Saul and say, I'm scared. Give me your armor back again. I want to put it back on. Did you read that in the story? No. Did you read about how David ran? No. From the battle? Or did he run to his enemy. Yes. Ho, 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 ho. You talk about steadfast and movable. And boy, did God smile upon David that day. And boy, did the church realize we do have a living God. And we are victorious, and we go and put the death of Philistines. Didn't they? Yes. I mean, the Philistines took took turn and run. Okay. So the idea is be don't be moved. Be steadfast, don't be moved. If anything, I'll give that the title to the message. Remember that. <laughs> be steadfast, don't be moved. Because, listen, when you go through things, the enemy is trying to move you away from the victory and the calling of God on your life. Mm -hmm. Now listen to me, beloved. As we read this, I want to show you how the Spirit is showing what really is at the heart of all. It, it's not necessarily because you're a Christian that you're going to come under assault. Although that could be true at times, especially if you're in another country where they don't like Christians. The fact that you name yourself as a Christian, you could come under assault. But, in this, we see what the enemy is trying to make you unsteadfast and move you. And if you read it, it says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. There is the heart of the attack. Listen. Where you are to be steadfast and immovable is your call and work in the Lord. The moment you step out and you enforce victory, you will come under enemy assault and enemy fire. 
with one purpose and one purpose only, to defeat you and get you to stop the work of the ministry. How do I know this? Because I have been under assault for the last 10 years. Waves of it came, but God, thank God, he gave me counsel about that. But waves would come, and when the wave would hit me and take me out, I'm ready to quit. You have no idea how many times things were screaming inside of me, my circumstances were telling me, and I'm tired, and I'm not doing it anymore, and I quit. Now you can sit there and act like you've never been through that. Now you know one thing, if you want to be a minister, you can't just decide not to come to church. You understand that? Every one of you in here can be under attack and decide, I'm not going to church. But I can't, I don't have that luxury. For it is compelled upon me and laid upon me, I've got to make the service. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because my master is important and so are his sheep. And therefore, I will lay it down for the sheep. Now that's the heart of the shepherd. I do not say that to exalt myself. I say that like David to encourage myself and to remind myself. And the other thing is, I got to come to church and find out what's going on. <laughs> because I have seen without fail if I press through, and I'm telling you the same for you, if you just press through, you stay yes. steadfast and immovable, beloved, you are going to see something break out and you'll say, now I understand why the heat was coming. Yes. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. I want you to say the enemy, the enemy. is ultimately awesome. trying to move me away from the Lord, away from his work. Because he can't stand me. And he hates the one in me. He really does. If he hated Christ, he's going to hate me. Because Christ is in me. But I've got victory. And I'm going to hand the devil defeat. Because my Savior was manifested for this to destroy the works of the devil. Therefore, I am here to destroy the works of the devil. And I am not going to destroy them unless I've got to know I am in the spirit. I am in victory. And I got all things in Christ. In fact, the Bible says all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Listen to it. 